This is a kit that I got recently from AliExpress and uh, I showed it in a recent post bag video. So uh, it's obviously a surface mount kit and so there's a couple of ICs in here and some other ancillary components, some capacitors and resistors and a crystal. And um, actually this kit has quite a lot of information available. It's, uh, it's quite a good one. So I'm going to build this. Now this is the data sheet that you can get. You can download it on a, from a website. So the, the website's mentioned here. So you can see the, the URL here and also this um, phrase here is actually a password. So if you go to this website you can download a zip file or RAR file I think it was. You can download a RAR file and then you, it's encrypted but you can unencrypt it using this as the key and if you do that you get uh, this data sheet and this is, this is the most interesting part of the data sheet. It does go on for several pages and it looks like it's some kind of um, you know like a lab for, for students because um, it's got in instructions of how to how to build. It's all written in Chinese, of course, but you can Google Translate it. Um, and so you've got the the schematic here, and you've also got the table which shows which components go where. So using the silk screen, you can get things in in the right place. So that's good. Um, so we can see from the schematic we've got the 74HC4060, which is this strange. CMOS chip that includes an oscillator and uh, a ripple counter so it's got some logic in it as well and if I remember right Big Clive had something had a video where he looked at this for some reason um, he built something with this chip but I've, I've never actually used this chip before so this will be an interesting new venture so we have the so this is basically uh, a crystal oscillator here and so th this is oscillating and the and the ripple counter is acting as a frequency divider and then this goes into the 74HC393 and the 393 here is, is also a ripple counter, it's a 4-bit ripple counter and this is just being used to reduce the frequency even more I think and then in the end you've got these outputs here so these are the output stages here. So for example, you've got the S output from the 74HC393. So that goes into the base of a transistor. So the transistor is switching the LED. So th these are basically for flashing the LEDs. And I think what this does, uh, apart from having the interest of the flashing LEDs on the board, I think the idea is that you get different frequencies of square wave coming out of the PQRS. So um, after I built it I'm going to attach it to the oscilloscope and see what frequencies are coming out. Now I'm not uh, I'm not very good at building surface mount uh, stuff. Um, I'm not a really big fan of surface mount. You might know if you've seen me in previous videos. Um, and I, I don't think my technique is anything particular to learn from so I'm, I'm not going to sort of tediously assemble this in front of you I'm just going to go off camera and and, um, and solder these components on and then um, and then we'll get straight to the testing so here we are the boards all assembled and as you can see the lights are twinkling nicely the four LEDs um, so I'll just show you, I had a couple of mishaps here. So one of these transistors pinged off and I couldn't find it. Um, luckily I had another surface mount component uh, lying around in my bits box. It's not exactly the same type as these but it seems to be NPN just the same and uh, I'll put it in and it's working so that's good. The other problem was this capacitor here, C1, uh, and the capacitors are really really tiny. See this one down here C1, uh, C2 rather, is comparable and it's I mean that's only a couple of millimeters long it's absolutely tiny 
and what happened was when I was holding that down with the tweezers and trying to solder one end it pinged off and just disappeared completely and um, I don't know where it is it's but it's you know it looks like a speck of dust or something um, so luckily I managed to find this polyester capacitor in my bits box and I've soldered that in and that seems to be fine it's a little bit high I think it's 43 picofarads but the the clock looks okay it's it's running at well the slowest uh, slowest lead there is flashing about one hertz I think but we'll check with the scope so you've also soldered on this header on the side here to make it easier to attach probes to the pins so let's just attach channel one to that bottom one so we can see on the bottom here it's reading about one hertz and with the other probe we can look at the other pins so so that's the next pin up I've got there put channel 2 on as well There we are. So you can see that channel two, well if I just halt that for a second, you can see on channel two you get, you've get you got one complete cycle within half a cycle of the one above. So this is two hertz. And then the next one you've got, you've got one, two, three, four cycles within a single cycle so this is four hertz and then finally the top one that's now eight hertz so you've got eight times the frequency of of the one above so it's a simple little you know clock divider circuit um was you know about as difficult as usual uh, to do the soldering because you know the surface mount stuff is really fiddly and difficult but uh, it worked first time and um, it's a good little demonstration of what you can do with that uh, 74HC 4060 oscillator chip